Hello and welcome back. <laughs> Today we have, uh, it's from eBay, it's a spectrum analyzer and it's the Enritsu, uh, the MS610Z and uh, you don't find uh, too much the type C and I, th and I think the only difference is that it has here a uh, probe uh, uh, exit. Um, it's, a, it's a very basic uh, spectrum analyzer. It does not have a tracking source but uh, we can buy a, a noise source uh, for that. You can buy that on the Chinese websites. Um, it is a working unit. Uh, it does not look that nice yet because it's dirty and it has some damages. So uh, let's see if we can improve it and then we can run some tests and we, and we open it of course. Working on this machine uh, turned out to be uh, very enjoyable and easy because you can just unclick and then it just goes. You have the front. Once you unscrew the three screws in the bottom, the little hooks just um, uh, are loose. So and the front is just just held by these uh, little hooks. And uh, now you can just carefully take out the front and of course you want to clean also the, the display so this is the front and uh, as you can see a lot of uh, dirt has come into the display and the buttons and uh, but uh, now we remove the front it's uh, a lot easier to to work on it and everything is crew so it's really really nice to work on yeah, I've here these uh, little windows as you can see it's dirty and scratched and uh, here I have one that I already have clean and uh, there is a little trick to remove scratches and uh, they taught me this in, in school if you work with uh, yeah, plexiglass, plexiglass I don't know what's the name with this type of uh, plastics and what you do you get a soft cloth like this and you use this uh, copper or brass cleaner and then you just make a circle of movement over the scratches and then you polish it out and uh, it takes a bit of effort but you will remove your scratches so that's my tip look at this okay after all the cleaning now uh, the fun part we're gonna put it back together again and we're gonna look at the result. So look. Look at this, doesn't it look great? Okay, it's all clean, also on the outside, in the back and everything. Um, let's open it. Okay, it's now opened from the top. Now you can see where is the, the tube. This I have no clue. And uh, here is the all HF part. Here you set the frequency and uh, it looks like you just directly do it in here. Mm -hmm. Power supply and a huge tube. Uh, maybe we can see more from the bottom. 
Oh, there's just a few from the bottom, not much to see. Let's see if we can uh, remove this uh, panel. I removed the plate and it seems that we are looking at the IF section. That's what it says. A lot of points of adjustment. Well, I see here it is running on 24.9 MHz, which is a pity because if it was 10 MHz, I could have put it on my uh, laboratory lab, uh, but it is not. Opening one of the sides, and uh, yeah. I will close it again. Now opening the uh, the left side, and there is another cover, and there is a sticker. So I see this is an invitation. Let's open up some more. And look at that. We are looking at the CRT drive. It just says it there. So everything is very well marked. And working on this thing is very easy. Just with screws, no complicated tools. Yeah, but uh, nice. Okay, I created a little setup. The Marconi is uh, transmitting on uh, 300 megahertz. We have here 700 uh, as center frequency, and we have a 1 gigahertz uh, span. So uh, if we plug it in, we should see it. And there is a little peak right there. So what we can do, we can uh, try to move it to 300 and let's put the span a little bit 50 megahertz there we have it we can do a little bit more 10 megahertz span Ooh. And here we see a nice peak. Here is fine. So, and uh, well, if you can see, it is a very clean signal. Uh, I did not calibrate it yet, so I, but I can do a, a marker level. I put more intensity. Then you can see you can move the marker. Now it's on the top, and then it would say how many dBMs it is. Uh, but I didn't calibrate it yet, but why does show what it does? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's about it. You can see uh, the signal is uh, clean or not. You can clean it up a little bit with the filter. It's uh, yeah, straightforward. Uh, as I said before, it doesn't have a, an, uh, a tracking generator, so we're going to use a noise source for that. It's just a transmitter that transmit a lot of noise everywhere, <laughs> and we just put that in front. Because with a normal tracking generator, the, the scan of the frequency of the spectrum analyzer is exactly the same as the tracking generator so the the transmitter moves the same as the as the scan does um, but if you have a separate device you, you it's it's very hard to sync that so then you just use a noise source yeah that's that's about uh, it i have now a little setup with a cb transceiver the blue device is my uh, RF top because uh, you cannot pull, put full power in inside the spectrum analyzer. So uh, in the blue device there is just a little dummy load, and I top uh, yeah, a little bit of the RF signal from there just to to keep it reduced. Um, and I will zoom in on the on the spectrum analyzer so you could see what you actually want to use the device for. So I uh, dimmed the lights a bit so you can uh, see it a lot better. Um, well, why you use the spectrum analyzer? Well, you can see here the main peak. But what you want to see if you are adjusting, if there are any side peaks here. And you can see here, there is a little one. And you will always have that. But while you, when you adjust the transmitter, you try to get those as low as possible. Because if you're only looking at the power when you are adjusting, 
then it could be that you're also just getting your harmonics or your side bands you put the power there and the power meter will probably not see that and that's why you also want to see your spectrum and uh, your spectrum to uh, see that so you can see but this is a logarithmic scale so this is nothing but you see a little peak then and now it's gone so it's really in that signal That's it, that's my uh, teardown review of the Enrutsu Spectrum Analyzer. There will be a part two when I uh, have received my uh, noise source. And uh, for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.